Ah, nice day today. Supposed to be a nice day tomorrow, for that matter. Question is, where to go fly fishing tomorrow? I could go for wild rookies, for sure. Wild browns, maybe? Hmm. You know what I should do? Get a beer, of course. So, they are stocking a whole lot of streams lately. I should really take advantage of that. Hit a nice stalker stream, enjoy a little slugfest. But which one? Ha! <laughs> That's it! Well, my mind is made up. Is there anything a good beer can't do? <laughs> yes! Welcome back, guys, and welcome to another episode of Connecticut Angler. You know, it's not every day that you get your inspiration for where to fish at next from a beer, but that's how it worked out this time. That's right, Hop Brook IPA, brewed over at Lasting Brass in Watertown. And uh, I thought it would be neat to actually head over to the namesake river of that beer and fish it. And what better time than right now uh, as we're moving into late March. So, got the trusty old five weight here. Beautiful March day. We're about to hit the water and see if we can find ourselves some fish out here on Hop Brook. I'll tell you a little bit more about the brook and kind of go over what I'm going to be throwing today as we progress into the episode. But for now, I have uh, quite a ways walk downstream that I'm going to make so that I can fish my way back up to my truck here. So let's get started and hopefully bring some fish to the net. walk all the way downstream before I made a cast, but I saw this one pool and I was like, yeah, let me stop and just give it a go. And uh, there we got it, guys. <laughs> this rainbow just took uh, a big size 10 encased caddis fly, or nymph rather. There we go, guys. Getting it started in short order here. <laughs> I've been walking for maybe two minutes. And I was like, ah, let me give this pool a shot. And already, we have our first fish. Well, all right, guys. <laughs> so, looks like we get it kicked off really, really quick on this, uh, on this stalker stream here. My plan was to walk downstream quite a ways before I even started fishing at all. But I just glanced through the trees here and I saw this pool. I just thought, damn, that looks really nice. Let me just give that a go really, really quick. 
you know, just to kind of wet my whistle, get the line wet. And already we got ourselves a fish. Not too bad. Soccer rainbow, obviously. Certainly you're never gonna find a wild rainbow in a stream like this. Um, they're rare in Connecticut as is, and definitely a virtual impossibility on this stream. But uh, getting it kicked off real quick. Hot brook, all right. <laughs> There is another really nice pool, literally just downstream, 10 feet downstream. There may well be a, a, a fish in that pool as well, but rather than get totally sidetracked, I'm gonna stick to my plan. I'm gonna continue my hike uh, downstream here so that I can work my way upstream, eventually completing the trek at my truck. So, no more fishing than, until then. I'm gonna try to be disciplined about this. <laughs> All right, guys, well, I've hopped down at another crossing here, and uh, we're gonna start our upstream trek and see what we can do. I did kind of glance over the side of this bridge. Didn't, uh, no visual on any fish in the area that I could see over here. But we're gonna put our nymph down here uh, underneath the bridge. You know, bridge pools, it can be hit or miss, especially with stalkers great place to go for stalkers sometimes but they also get hit really early in the season first thing and sometimes you will find that uh, the stalkers that are put there get fished out first whether they get so pressured that they sort of just shut down completely and stop eating and then other times it'll be a freaking bonanza <laughs> so you never do know you always got to try. Yeah. So I'm just getting snags. That's all this is. I'm sure it's very shallow over there. So we are, yeah, once again, I'm just going to bypass this bridge altogether. You know, like I said, and bridge pools are always a great place to start if you're fishing on a stream that you have not fished before. And I have never fished this stream before but they're not always great, for sure. Oh yeah, very shallow. Definitely could have been a fish there, but it would seem that to know there wasn't in this case. And in my experience, stockers tend to be lazy. If they can avoid faster, shallower water for the most part, they're probably going to do that until they get quite accustomed to the stream. However, in some cases, you know, they're stocked in areas where Ooh. In some cases, they're stocked in areas where, um, you know, they don't really have any alternatives. And you'll find them hanging out in this faster, shallower stuff. Okay, so right off the bat, kind of working through my thought process with this being a stream I've never fished before. The trick in kind of a smaller stocker stream like this is, is again, like I said, these fish, if they can avoid it, will avoid faster, shallower water. They're gonna want water that's more like the hatchery pools that they're accustomed to. So, oh, I had to drown there. So you're gonna to wanna to try to, especially if they're stocked within the last couple weeks, you're gonna definitely wanna to try to focus on that sort of water. Now that is not to say that you can't have success fishing faster water or that stockers will not hold in faster water. They absolutely will. But a larger proportion of them most certainly will avoid it if possible. Got them. See? <laughs> this is kind of a larger pool that we came to and I had a pretty damn good feeling that we were going to bump into one here. Big brookie, oh my gosh, big stalker brookie. <laughs> All right, second species of the day here. Not too bad. Let's see, this guy took the little hairs here. Very nice brookie. And we're already two thirds of our way towards a trifecta too. These stalker streams, it's always a possibility. All right, let's get this hairs here kicked out and uh, we'll get him back in the water. All right, well, there you go, guys. I mean, the classic stalker equation pays off. And, and I literally hooked that fish while I was kind of explaining exactly why this is the sort of spot um, that I would invest my time in. 
on uh, on a stocker street. You know, these fish do not like to struggle if they can avoid it. Now that that will change over time as uh, whatever fish uh, continue to hold over in this stream, kind of get acclimated and kind of get to know their environment better. But you know, within the first several weeks of having been stocked, these fish are lazy. <laughs> and they're they're going to want to be in these lazy sorts of pools uh, over getting up into the faster runs. And again, I'm generalizing. That's not to say that you should completely ignore water that uh, that isn't dead still. But um, you know, it's about playing the odds, like like all fishing. It's about playing the odds, and the odds are the stockers are kind of going to be in this lazier, deeper stuff where they can kind of just hang out effortlessly. <laughs> Okay, very sizable pool over here, quite large. Now, it does look fairly shallow, especially in the rear half of the pool, but um, if there's anything deeper at all, even in the, just in the last third, then I would say this pool certainly holds some promise. Now, kinda, it's get deepening up a little bit here. It's still only about, where I'm pointing is only about a foot deep, but there could certainly be, oh, Oh, am I seeing fish rising over here? Is that what's going on? Yep, look at that. You see that, guys? Let me just point it out here. I'll point out the next fish that rises. I've just seen, yep, there's a rise up there. Let's just wait. Just scope it out. There's a rise right in front of me right there. Okay, guys, we have tons of risers out here. So you know what? I'm just going to switch over to a uh, dry dropper rig, and we're going to give these fish the option of taking either a nymph or a dry fly. Okay, so, here we go guys. Very first cast with a dry dropper. Let's see what happens. Immediately, immediately. <laughs> this fish, this fish took the nymph. Kinda wanna get him in quick because there's a lot of fish up here that I have a chance of targeting. But not if this guy's racing up and scaring them all. <laughs> yes, all right, all right. Got ourselves a rainbow. He took that little hairs here. I mean, first cast, first drop. Let's get him right back in the, in the water. Let's just see if we can get one literally second cast. I still see fish swirling right out there. Boom. <laughs> oh, Lord almighty. <laughs> Oh, come on, buddy. Come on. What have we got here? Looks like a brookie. Yeah, this guy's got some heart, too. Let me tell you. You know, if there's, if there's one thing that can be said about hatchery fish, they might not always be the prettiest fish. They certainly don't have the, uh, the romance of a wild fish, but they definitely have size and energy. No question about that. Okay, guys. Getting out there to some of the risers, and we got a fish. This is a little one. Huh, very small. He's barely pulling it all. Oh, no, he just happened to be coming right towards me. Yeah, guys, so as you can see, obviously we've come up on, on an area where these, these stockers have, uh, <laughs> they, they like what they found as far as the uh, relative stillness of the water. Now, this is not, this is not stagnant water. I should be clear about that. You can get drifts on this water. It's not stagnant at all, but it's got a little bit of depth. It's got a little bit of current flow, but not so much as to uh, prevent them from being kind of the lazy stockers they are. Uh, and they're hungry and they're feeding away. So I'm really kind of curious to see if we're gonna get one on the dry fly up here. But uh, so far, obviously they, they cannot resist this little hair's ear nymph. <laughs> Okay, well, just as I was saying, we had 11% left in this battery. We got snagged in this tree. But what's kind of funny about this is it looks like everybody else also gets snagged in this tree uh, because my fly is actually stuck right around the spoon. But we're not done plucking stuff out of this tree yet. Let me show you what else we got up here. A power bait. So we're gonna strip that out of the tree along with the spoon and uh, keep on fishing this pool this place up at least a little bit, right? Got him. <laughs> Don't want to 
Don't let these fish run too much if you can avoid it. They will spook everything else. There's also no reason to play them all crazy if you don't have to. Oh, is this a brown? Is this our trifecta fish? Well, you know my color blindness, so I'm not even gonna try to call it until I actually see this damn fish. It is a brown! All right, guys, well, we've already gotten our freaking trifecta. All right, not bad. Gosh, I've only been on the stream an hour so far. We've already gotten several fish and the trifecta. You know, is it a testament to uh, extraordinary skill? No, uh, but I mean, come on. This is fun, guys, this is fun. <laughs> already knocked out the trifecta. I mean, good lord, we're just hammering them right now. And I still see so many fish rising further up in this pool. There's no question, there's, there's more that await us now. I don't think I need to beat up every single fish in this pool. I'm not sure how many there are, but uh, we are gonna catch some more. We're definitely gonna get, get into a couple more of these. I really wanna try to get one to come up and take this dry fly. Kinda knock out all the little benchmarks here. So we got the trifecta. Let's get our dry fly fish now. All right, guys, well, we were absolutely beaten up on them in that pool. And believe me, I'm leaving a lot of fish on the table over there. I and mean, there's a lot of fish in there I did not catch. You know, there's no reason to literally beat up on every single one. When you're talking about stock fish, there's nothing really all that impressive about coming back and saying, oh, I caught 85 today. <laughs> you know, once you know you got their number, get your fill in that pool, move on, and uh, explore other parts of the stream. And if you nab a lot more fish in a lot more parts of the stream, so be it. But you know, there's no reason to just kick the crap out of them just because you found them stacked in one spot. Now, I'm guessing my audio quality is kind of deteriorating here uh, because the wind is just blowing right down my face. Oh. oh, shoot. Well, you know, these neoprene waders, they are very insulative, but they do have rubber soles and I didn't put the studs in them. So sometimes you're gonna fall in the water and look like a fool. But I'm gonna give you guys the privilege of uh, seeing that by leaving it in the video just for you. <laughs> area here. We have what appears to be the site of a really old bridge. So we have a uh, abutment here, then over here we have uh, dry laid field stone. Now in all likelihood a bridge used to cut right across here. Then we have some pretty complex deep little currents, kind of like little rivulets down through here, where we could definitely find some stockers that are holding. Got him. Oh, lost him. Damn. Damn. That was a decent fish. He was up in the faster stuff. It's probably the only fish that was holding in there. It's a, it's a narrow, narrow little spot. Ah. Ah, that one burned me. That one burned me. I really wanted that fish. And I just look upstream here. Fish rising like crazy. Fish rising like crazy. Okay. We gotta head up there. We gotta head up there for sure. So I'm gonna throw an elk hair caddis back on here. My uh, my last goal at Hopbrook today is to get a fish on the dry. I couldn't really manage to do it, but I overshot the place where I planned to stop kind of on a whim, not thinking that I was gonna see some more risers. So I think I need to seize this opportunity and try to make 
this dry fly fish happen. Now that we're a little bit, we're a little bit closer, I'm going to pause here for a minute so you can see these fish rise. Yep, see that? There's at least two. There's at least two. Oh, there might even be three of them. Okay, we got a nice drift out there. Oh. Oh. Drowning stonefly. Struggling at the top. The fish hit at him twice before he finally got him. The whole time dodging my fly. Got him. Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. And we got ourselves our dry fly fish, guys. All right. <laughs> That's what I wanted to get in order to top off this outing. And we have made it happen. Snatch that elk hair caddis. All oh, right. Nice. That's our dry fly eater, folks. All right, guys, we get the dry fly fish after all. <laughs> you know, it was just funny because the first time I casted that fish, I just had my fly just happened to touch down next to an actual struggling fly. And, you know, in a competition between an actual struggling fly and uh, a fly made of deer hair, the struggling fly is definitely going to get much more attention, and that's exactly what happened. That fish snatched up the actual struggling fly. But uh, <laughs> on the second cast, I didn't have any competition from natural insects, and we finally got ourselves a dry fly taker. Not bad. Not bad at all. I'll give it a couple more casts out there, and we'll see what we can do, and then we're going to pack it back up. Oh, we got one! Yeah! Wow! Oh my gosh, he raced up like a freaking shark! Woo. <laughs> Another rainbow! Oh my gosh! Got him! Got him! Alright guys, that was our second dry fly fish, and actually as I was uh, getting that fish out of the net, I saw another fish rise out there, so they are still rising. Yep, got him. Got him. <laughs> oh, I lost him. Oh, damn. It's just rose over there. Oh, perfect drift. Got him. Yes. Whoever would have thought that I was going to hit <laughs> just an absolute slugfest of rising fish.